Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ben here, and today I have a video which will be about the Philadelphia 76ers and basically how I think they can go from being a solid contender to a definitive championship team. What I mean by this is that right now I feel like uh, after the Jimmy Butler trade, Philadelphia is still in the second tier of Eastern Conference teams in that I sort of see a first tier as like uh, Toronto and Boston and then a second tier of Milwaukee and Philadelphia. I don't see them being equal to the higher two teams that I listed in the East yet. Uh, last year Boston beat them without their two all-stars. Now they have their two all-stars back. Yes, Philly acquired an all-star right now, but they also gave up two of their best starters, or two good starters I should say, because their best starters are Simmons and Embiid. So basically today what the subject of my video is, is how I think in the next year Philadelphia can make uh, various strategic moves through acquiring players to go from being a, a good playoff team, a team that goes to the second round, they can go from that to a team that gets to the finals and maybe even wins the finals. Okay, so to get into it, I'll just explain really quick what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go through some of these moves that I, devi that I have devised. I'm going to be talking about the, the salary cap of Philadelphia a bit and why I chose these players that they should acquire and how they would fit and why I have them on the team. So in all these moves, the basic thing that I was looking at for what this team is lacking as currently constructed with Jimmy Butler and Bede and Simmons and basically Fultz and Redick is the core right now and they don't really have much off the bench but uh, basically what I saw with that team is that they strongly lack shooting. Um, like if you have that five-man unit that I talked about Fultz, Redick, Simmons, Butler, and Embiid on the court you only really have one guy that you should trust all the time shooting an, uh, an arranged jump shot in JJ Redick. Uh, from the outside, Fultz and Embiid aren't really good, neither is Simmons, and then um, Butler is, like, average. And Embiid can shoot it a little bit, just like Fultz can shoot it a little bit. Embiid is probably the third best shooter of that fivesome, uh, Fultz being the fourth best, and Simmons obviously being the worst because he doesn't even shoot outside shots. So the main thing I was addressing in looking at all these moves that the 76ers could make is acquiring shooting. So the first move I have would be definitely Philadelphia acknowledging that Markel Fultz is a bust. And that move would be trading Fultz to the San Antonio Spurs for uh, Marco Bellinelli. If you don't know, Marco Bellinelli played for Philadelphia last year. And he did really well for them. Shot the, belt, shot the ball well. Spaced the court well. Did just was a really good fit for this team. Um, was a good sub for JJ Redick when he'd come into the game. And basically, why I have them doing this trade is that they need a guy like uh, Bellinelli. His contract lines up perfectly with Fultz. I think next year Fultz is making nine million and Bellinelli is making eight. And each team has enough cap space, so this could work out fine. Uh, and what do the Spurs really need right now is a point guard. And I think. Although Pop, uh, you know, maybe he's nearing the end of his career and he doesn't want a huge project like this, but Markel Fultz is a young guy with still plenty of promise, and I think in the hands of one of the greatest coaches of all time, he could really develop into something more than what he is currently in Philly. And, you know, I know another guy that had a terrible outside jump shot that became a, a great player in San Antonio, and he went by the name of Tony Parker. Now, I'm not saying that they have a ton of similarities to their game, but, uh, just in some broad strokes, Tony Parker is a guy that was very successful in his career from not, and even though he didn't have a good outside jump shot whatsoever, who knows what Pop could transform Markel Fultz into. So I think each team would benefit from this trade. Uh, San Antonio plugs a hole that they have at point guard, and Philadelphia assists in uh, getting some spacing on the floor for the team in adding Marco Bellinelli and a little bit more depth too off the bench. Looking at the the next move, or basically the next couple of moves for this team, I'm looking at the salary cap for Philadelphia after this season ends, and they will have 
about $50 million on the books. The only players that they'll have on the books are Embiid, let's say Bellinelli, if they would have traded for him, uh, Ben Simmons, Zyar Smith, Landry Sh Shamit, and then Jonah Bolden. Those guys add up to around $52 million or uh, $51 million. And the the soft cap in the NBA is 101 million, with the hard cap at 123, meaning that if a team is willing to pay the money, they can go up to 123 million. So I'm going to assume that Philadelphia is willing to go up to that total uh, for the purposes of this video, which most teams are, by the way. Most teams are willing to go beyond that soft cap up to the hard cap threshold of the luxury tax. So that being said, I think that their first move in the offseason should be to re-sign Jimmy Butler. Uh, okay, just wait really quick before I get into that. They so the the max or the the hard cap is 123 million. They have 51 on the books. So essentially, they have 70 million dollars in cap space to deal with. So basically, that 70 million dollar figure is what I'm going to be referring to throughout the video. So okay, moving on. The first thing I think they should do is re-sign Jimmy Butler, who I think will demand roughly 30 million dollars. He wants a max, but I think. They will be able to get him to sign for 30. Okay, so that's the first move. Sign Jimmy Butler for 30 million. Now that leaves you with roughly 40 million dollars left in cap space. Um, and what I think that they should do is next go out and sign JJ Redick back because he's going to be a free agent, and I think that they still need him on the team. Uh, this this year he's averaging 18 points a game, shooting it pretty well. Um, last year. He scored 17 points a game and shot 42% from three-point land. So I think obviously he's a pretty good player. He's making $12 million this year. What I would do is uh, try to sign him for around 10, and then that would leave you with around $30 million left in cap space, which I think is very doable to still make some impact free agent signings. Uh, okay, so after that, what I would do next is try and sign... Uh, Boyan Bogdanovich, who plays for the Pacers right now, he's on an expiring contract after this year. Uh, just to review, he for his career has averaged 12 points a game and has shot 38% from three. Uh, last year he shot 40% from three. This year he's actually shooting 52% from three-point land. And what does this team need? As I said previously, they need spacing. So if you've noticed so far, the guys that, that I think that they should bring in are Bellinelli, uh, who shoots 38% from three for his career, J.J. Redick, who shoots over 40% from three for his career, and Bogdanovich, who's currently shooting 52% from three and 38% from their first career. And just if you don't know, uh, like 35% is pretty average from three, so anything above that's like good. Um, okay, so sign Bogdanovich for around 10 million I'd try to aim for. He's making eight now. I think that 10 would be pretty reasonable. Um, so get him for $10 million. That's a good pickup for them. This leaves them with around $20 million in cap space. Now a guy who I think would be interesting for them to sign, I think would also be beneficial, would be Trevor Ariza, who most people recognize him as playing with the Rockets as of late. Uh, this year he's playing for the Suns on a one-year deal for $15 million. I think that that's a little bit of an overpay for him. I think he's going to be 34 next season, so I think he'd be reasonable enough to not expect that amount of money uh, for his services. I think he'd accept 10 from Philadelphia, which would be pretty reasonable and pretty fair for what he'd bring to the table. Probably around 10 points a game on decent shooting numbers and good defense. Again, for his career, he shoots 35% from three, and last year he shot 37% from three, so a good outside threat. And especially defense would be, his defense would be good for this team as well. And then the last, uh, so that leaves them with $10 million. And at this point, they have, I think, around 10 or 11 guys on their roster, including all these moves. So then what I would do is re-sign Mike Muscala, who this year is only making, I think, five. He's making, uh, let's see here. He's making $5 million, And I tried to re-sign him for that same amount, $5 million. He really doesn't do much of anything. Uh, he doesn't play that much. He's playing 20 minutes a game this year, and he doesn't rebound much for his position uh, for a game this year. He's scoring seven points a game. But what he is doing is he shoots a good amount of three-pointers. First career, he's 37% from three. 
That includes last season when he shot 37% and the year before where he shot 42% from three, which is very good. Again, helps hammer home this idea of Philadelphia uh, creating a lot of spacing for their team and having a guy, another guy that can space it and step out and take a three-point shot. And the la So that leaves them with around $5 million, and they have 11 guys on their roster. I would then sign back TJ McConnell, who's making like $1 million right now. Or let's see here. TJ McConnell is actually, yeah, he's making one6 I'd re-sign him for about three, and then maybe you could that would get you at 12, so at the minimum for players on your roster. And then I feel like you could really sign anybody, um, like maybe just somebody for the vets minimum to a contract, or a few guys to the vets minimum, like like uh, what am I? The word I'm looking for, um, just veterans who want to compete for a championship, or undrafted rookies, or whoever. Uh, Philadelphia traded away their draft pick that, that they had the Kings draft pick and they traded that to the Celtics in the faults for Tatum deal but um, they could draft a guy uh, in the second round or use their own draft pick to draft a guy and fill out the rest of the roster but yeah I re-signed Muscala and TJ McConnell just because they're pretty decent backups for the team so to review what that would all mean is that they would be at about 120 million, so right on the edge of that hard cap. Uh, but they would still be within their means, and they could sign all these guys. Again, to review, trade for Bellinelli because him and Fultz had the same contracts. Try to sign Butler for around 30, and then sign Redick, Bogdanovich, and Ariza all to around 10 million dollar contracts. And then Muscala for a brown five, which is what he's making now, and McConnell for three, which is more than he's making now. And then just fill out the rest of the roster with late draft picks or veterans who are willing to play for not very much money. That being said, uh, this is what their lineup and bench would look like after those moves. Next year, their starting lineup would look like Simmons at point guard, uh, Redick at shooting guard, Butler at the small forward. Power forward would likely be starting Trevor Ariza as sort of a small ball power forward, uh, much like the Rockets did last year with starting either him at the power forward or, or as they still do with P.J. Tucker at the four. And then start, a starting center would obviously be in Bede. And then off the bench as your backup point guard, you'd have McConnell still. As your backup shooting guard, you'd have Bellinelli. Uh, your backup small forward would be Bogdanovich. And then your backup power forward and center would be Mike Muscala. Now, if you look at that compared to this year's roster, uh, let's look at this year's roster really quick. Your basic starting lineup is like, uh, right now, I think it's um, Simmons, Redick, uh, Butler, Wilson Chandler, and Embiid with Fultz, Muscala, and TJ McConnell as your main bench guys. That's like your eight guys, basically. And so of those eight guys, you go down the roster, you say, okay, Simmons can't shoot, Redick, yes, Butler's average from three, uh, Wilson Chandler average from three, uh, and Bead essentially can't shoot. So that's, uh, okay, so if they're a good three-point shooter, I'll just say that's one, and if they're an average three-point shooter, I'll say that's half a point. So in that starting lineup, you have Redick as a one, Butler and Chandler as half points, so that adds up to two. And then off the bench, TJ McConnell doesn't shoot it, so that's not a point. Neither does Fultz. And then Muscala is like slightly above average, so uh, just to be give them the benefit of the doubt, we'll call that a one. So that adds up to three sh three points as far as shooting ability of this team. Now, if I use that same scale of average shooter being a half a point and good shooters being one point for this hypothetical roster, you have Simmons, which is zero. You have Redick, which is one. You have Butler, which is a half point. You have Ariza, which is a half point. That's up to two. And Bede can't shoot. McConnell can't shoot. And then you have uh, Muscala, Bogdanovich, and Bellinelli, which adds up to three. So that adds up to a total of five, which is obviously higher than what the other team had at three. You significantly improve your shooting ability. Uh, you could have a you could have so many different combinations of lineups with these guys. Let's say you want to go really defensive. Your lineup would look like Simmons, Butler, uh, probably then Bogdanovich at the three, Ariza at the four, and Embiid at the five. 
the only guy on the court that's really not a great defender there or is like a, an average defender to slightly below average would be Bogdanovich. Everyone else is at least a good defender. And in the case of like Butler and Embiid like, and Ariza, like uh, pretty good, like Embiid's the top of the NBA. Butler's like an all-NBA defender. Ariza's a really, really solid defender. So obviously you could have a really defensive-oriented lineup. Or if you want like max spacing on the court, you could have something like uh, Muscala at the 5, Ariza at the 4, Bogdanovich at the 3, uh, Redick and Bellinelli out there. Every single guy can shoot a 3-point shot. But what I like is probably their best like death lineup is what the, the starting lineup is. Or if you want a lot of shooting but you still want Simmons and Embiid out there, you could have Simmons at the 1, Redick at the 2, Bellinelli at the 3, Bogdanovich at the 4, and Embiid at the 5. That would also be a really good shooting lineup where you can have Simmons penetrating and kicking it out to Redick or Bellinelli or Bogdanovich, or you could have Embiid working in the post, and then all those three guys are out on the wings. So uh, help defense can't come over because they have to uh, check their guys from three-point land so they can't sag off of them or else. And Embiid's a decent passer. He gets four assists a game. He can pass it out of the paint and get it to those guys. Uh, so really why I like all these moves is Okay, I didn't I didn't say something like uh, like I could have said, just made a video where I said sign Jimmy Butler to the max for 35 million and then sign Kevin Durant to the max for 35 million. But the reason why I don't like that option is that that leaves them with Fultz that leaves them with this as their starting lineup. Uh, Fultz, Butler, uh, Simmons, Durant, and and uh, Joel Embiid. And the rest of the roster would be like scrubs off the bench. It would be like Zaya, okay, not scrubs, but guys that really aren't all that good. It'd be Landry Shamit, Jonah Bolden, uh, Zaya Smith, and then a bunch of like second round rookies or undrafted rookies or veterans on the minimum because they wouldn't have any cap space left. I like this move better in that you get Jimmy Butler, you get the third star. And then you just get a bunch of guys that don't need the ball in their hands and can space the floor and can really open up the offense for you. And in the case of Ariza, you get a good defender. And TJ McConnell uh, can be a decent defender and a little bit pesky. He's essentially, I'd say, like a combination of J.J. Barea and Matthew Della Vadova, which in certain scenarios can be a very good player. That being said, I like this a lot better because if you have bring in, let's say, Durant, or um, let's even say Kawhi or Kemba Walker on a max deal, those guys aren't going to fare at, or they're going to still do well, and Philadelphia will still be a better team. But I think that they're better with the scenario I presented, because if they just sign another max player in Butler, there's not enough balls to go around. And I think uh, eventually that becomes a problem with certain teams, because Kemba Walker's a guy who, if he's not bringing the ball up every time and getting... 18 shots a night, he's not really an effective player. Or, um, you know, Kawhi Leonard can still be a very effective player, but still the depth would be so lacking on that team. If anyone in the starting lineup or of the core four of Embiid, Simmons, Kawhi, and Butler went down, they'd be significantly worse off because they'd be subbing in to start for him in his place like um, like uh, Landry Shamit, who, although he looks somewhat promising as a rookie right now, he, he is not an NBA starter caliber player. Okay, all that being said, I, again, like these moves I put together a lot because they space the floor so well, and they're all, like, um, good good basketball players, but not so good that you have to overpay for them. Guys that are all in a situation where they'd be willing to accept the contracts they're getting. Um, guys who aren't 25 years old and think that they deserve the world, uh, like, maybe what a guy like, Okay, Kemba Walker's 28, but he kind of is going to expect a 35 to $40 million contract. But all that being said, this move for Philadelphia would greatly improve their offense and somewhat improve their defense. It would uh, space the floor for them, create a lot more opportunities for their main guys, and this is what could put them over the top and make them a championship contender, as opposed to just a team that gets bounced in the, in the second round every year. Okay. So in conclusion, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope if you have any thoughts on this, agreements or disagreements, you let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I like having conversations about this stuff. 
I had a lot of fun putting this video together because I just like looking at uh, player acquisitions and trading players and stuff like that. So this is right up my alley. And hope you guys have a good day. Bye.